If you had to write down everything that comes to mind when you think of injustice or inequality in your everyday life, what would you write down? You may be thinking about how it is unfair that some people have and earn so much money and others have so little and thus have different opportunities in life. Or how people have to face racism and stereotypes. Or that, depending on your gender, you will have different experiences in life and be treated differently. What maybe didn't cross your mind when thinking about inequalities and injustice are these. Wait a second. What exactly do stones and salt have to do with inequality? You've probably all seen these before. Maybe have even driven one. Well, these e-scooters or electric cars run with batteries, which are produced with lithium. Lithium? Yes, exactly, lithium. In fact, it's hard to imagine our lives without lithium these days, as almost all of our technical products are made with the help of lithium. But what is lithium anyway? Lithium is a natural raw material that belongs to the group of light metals and is so popular among other things because it is so light. And it looks a bit like our household sugar. But what exactly is lithium needed for? Where does lithium come from and what are the effects of mining lithium? To find answers to these questions, we spoke with Karen Kübelböck, researcher at the Austrian Foundation of Development Research. Lithium is mainly needed to produce rechargeable batteries. For instance, mobile phones, laptops and especially also electric vehicles. This is currently very important for the so-called green transition. The European Union has adopted the Green Deal, which means that our societies have to become climate neutral by 2050. This implies that we have to stop using fossil fuels to produce energy. In the future, our energy has to come from renewable sources. This includes hydropower, wind and solar energy. To store this energy, we need rechargeable batteries. And this is where lithium comes into play. Especially for replacing fuel-based vehicles with electric vehicles, lithium is a key material. And therefore, the extraction of lithium is increasing. Okay, that means lithium is important for a sustainable future, which sounds good and important for now. Yes, but we have to look at the bigger picture. Most of the metals that the European Union needs are imported from other countries. Some of these metals are concentrated in a small number of countries that sometimes do not have a stable government. When access to raw materials is not so easily guaranteed, the EU defines them as critical raw materials. And lithium is such a critical raw material. The largest lithium reserves are located in Chile, Argentina and Bolivia, the so-called lithium triangle. And the EU imports lithium mainly from Chile. Lithium is also mined in Australia and there are also lithium reserves in European countries, for instance in Portugal, Serbia and Austria. Okay, so for the record, lithium is available in smaller quantities in Europe and other countries, but the EU mainly imports it from the lithium triangle or to be more precisely, Chile. And what impacts does the extraction have on the environment? Well, the extraction of lithium has quite strong environmental impacts which vary depending on the way it is extracted. So you can either extract lithium by hard rock mining, which requires a lot of chemicals and water, so the pollution is very high, or you can extract it from saline groundwater. In Chile, for example, lithium is mined from salt lakes, where the water has to evaporate first in order to extract the lithium, which in turn requires a lot of water. This is problematic because often the regions where lithium is extracted are already water-scarce regions. This means that people living in these areas need the water for drinking and agriculture, but the available water is mainly used for the extraction of lithium and evaporates. This also shows how environmental problems and social problems are connected with each other. But at least the country and the population earn a lot of money with the extraction, right? It depends. Chile, for example, has quite a lot of income from lithium mining. But many times, the people who work or live in the mining regions have very little benefits and most of the profits are made by multinational companies that extract the raw material. So if a country and the people in this country benefit from the mining depends on the contracts that are made with those companies and on regulations such as tax or environmental laws. Okay, okay, that was a lot of information. But let's summarize it and put it a bit into context. So as we just heard, the extraction of lithium needs a lot of water. 
often in regions where there's already not enough water for the population, for example for drinking or agriculture. In addition, the mining of lithium and other raw materials also can have many social impacts. Although a country such as Chile is very rich in raw materials, the companies that mine lithium are often the biggest profiteers and not the country or the local population. On the contrary, the mining of raw materials is often accompanied by human rights violations like the exploitation of workers. Many countries that are rich in raw materials but therefore dependent on their extraction are actually the countries with the highest poverty rates of the population in the world. Although lithium does contribute to, for example, green mobility, it appears that the mining process is often quite dirty. What is our duty to contribute to a sustainable future? There is currently a lot of discussion about the circular economy. Circular economy means that we reuse materials that we have or that we use less materials than we currently do. There are already some regulations that include lithium, for example, the upcoming battery regulation in the European Union, which states that at least part of the lithium in batteries must come from recycled sources. Because at the moment, it is still cheaper to extract new lithium than to recycle it. Wait, what exactly is a circular economy? So nowadays, the technical production of goods is developing faster and faster and consumes more and more resources especially in the global north, contributing to a rapidly growing waste production. Products like, for example, your phone are designed to have a short life cycle. After we use a product, we throw it away. We take, we make, we waste. In contrast to this ever-increasing economic growth, a circular economy seeks to extend the life cycle of resources and products that have already been mined or produced, so that we can use them for as long as possible, rather than constantly producing more. This is leading me to what is commonly known as the different R's of circular economy. Have you have heard of them? These are for example... Rethink. Rethinking what products we really need. Reduce. Reducing the consumption of energy and materials by producing and buying products that are made to last. Reuse. Reusing products through selling or sharing them. Repair. Repairing your products is an effective way to keep your products working for longer and contributes to saving resources. And recycle. Ideally into materials that can be used to make the same product. So this would be one strategy, but I think this is not enough. Currently, we have a discourse in the European Union and in the world that says that if we want to transform our economy towards carbon neutrality, we need to extract more raw materials. And I think this cannot be the case. So the solution would be to have a very holistic circular economy strategy that starts with using less materials and not extracting more and more. So the next question is, do we really need so many electric cars and do we need mobility on an individual level? So we need new concepts of living and consuming in order to live in a truly sustainable way and to save our natural resources. Okay, let's sum it up. What do resources like lithium have to do with inequality? What is important to note is that although technical innovations are helping to find solutions to climate change, they cannot be relied on alone. First, because technical innovations, such as the development of electric cars, require many natural resources that are not infinitely available in the world, and the extraction of these has influence on nature and people. Second, We must also question who in which parts of the world profits from technical innovations and who does not, perhaps even suffers because of them. So we need not only technical innovation, but also new policies and ideas how we can achieve a good life for all globally and what has to change for this. Because the time to take action is now. <laughs>